just left it on. I threw it in my door pocket. Welcome back again to Drive in Anger. I checked it. DIA. The data and the recording is as good as This is my um, in my session in the at one. Eagle Canyon <laughs> Raceway. So I spent my this is the area or this, the track that I cut my teeth on as it relates to high-performance driving events. In March 5th and 6th, I did my very first track session here with Chin Track Racing. And it was very, very enjoyable. I had an amazing instructor, Lou Alexander. And he taught me the, the nuances of racing Braking, threshold early, braking, early, early. Um, turning, carrying the speed to the apex, allowing the car to track out naturally. Vision, track awareness in terms of being aware of what's happening around you, the flag stations, the flag that is being displayed, um, other drivers being, in, being ready to anticipate, being able to anticipate what other drivers are doing and just, just more or less being calm and and Maybe deliberate with steering and inputs and things day. like that, you know, smooth and so forth. And now I'm back again at Eagle Canyon Raceway to put some of those things to work, um, obviously. And I've had some other sessions. I've had a few sessions at Crescent Motorsport Park. I think this is my fifth HPD event now. And I must say it, um, it was my best in terms of consistency, in terms of steering input, in terms of being a little bit more relaxed with the car now and anticipating what the car is doing in different situations. Um, being uh, consistent and smooth. And today, Mark taught me how to trail brake. Um, the art of trail braking into the corners. And the car is like day and night now. I had a session a few weeks ago at um, Crescent Motorsport Ranch, and I was—I didn't have as much fun as I as I should have because um, I, I think for some reason I was probably overdriving the car. I wasn't really getting the car to behave the way um, I, I felt it should be on track, and so I had what six different sessions on track, six 20-minute sessions on track, and. Maybe three out of the six, I felt like I was, you know, hitting the marks and things like that. But I wasn't really, really, really confident. But today's session at ECR here, I really, really, really did pretty good, I think. I, um, I was able to hit the breaking points uh, consistently. I was able to hit the apexes uh, most of the time. I was able to practice the threshold braking, trail braking even into the corners, gently coming off the brakes and applying throttle um, in a steady but deliberate manner, being smooth on the steering inputs, um, and just being really, really calm and aware of what's happening around uh, on the track. I did um, nice. do a mistake in terms of uh, well, I think I did two mistakes. One was I point someone by on the wrong side. And those point bys are very important because one of the things you need to be is very, very predictable on track so that other drivers who are faster approaching can know exactly what it is you're going to do because knowing what you're going to do determines what they are going to do. Right? So it needs to be very, very predictable. And it's very, very important for any kind of um, track session. Uh, period. Um, but so there was one pass, there was one um, uh, point by that I point the the um, I point the other driver by on the wrong side. So I learned that. Uh, and the other one was in my first session here, coming around this corner in particular. I got a little bit greedy on the you throttle, the on the tires? and I started applying the throttle too quickly. And of course, I spun the car out a little bit. And it didn't go off track, spun it on track, was able to recover and continue on with the, um, with the driving event. 
Uh, so, but much thanks to, to Mark for helping me to understand the art of trail braking and how efficient it is in terms of getting the car to turn in at the apex. Uh, turn in right here, carry the speed, transition to the left-hand corner, hit that apex, get on the throttle, track out, and take it all the way down to the next corner, hit the brakes, trail in to the corner on the brakes, get off the brakes and throttle through the apex, let it track out a little bit. And yeah, so today I was very, very good at hitting the marks, breaking points, the apex, tracking out, consistent steering input. And um, I appreciate um, what Mark has done to help me to get to that point. And so I had a lot of fun um, today. The track was very, very hot. So later on in the run, you could feel it was very, very greasy. So it was a little bit of slipping and sliding here and there. Um, but nevertheless, it was a lot of fun, a lot of enjoyment. I learned a lot. And looking at the video afterwards, as I voice over this, I noticed that there were certain things that I could do better, which I will definitely practice next time I go to ECR or any other track. For example, here, my goal was to break a little bit before, a little bit in between the four and the three board. But I noticed, I, re I realized I was lifting even before I got to the braking area. So I was lifting at about the five board and then applying the brakes in between the four, uh, the three and the four. The idea is as soon as you lift, get on the brakes, not lift and coast and brake. So I was losing time there. Another thing that I realized also is that, especially coming off of the corners that led down the long straight, I was in the wrong gear, so I didn't get as much of a drive off the corner, right? Because I was in a gear that was too high. I drove mostly in fourth gear. So right here, for this corner in particular, I should downshift to third, carry the speed here across the apex, and then throttle, full throttle right here, and just allow the car to track out. I would get more drive out of the corner, which means by the time I get down to this next braking event for turn one, I should be carrying up to 110 miles an hour at least, 110, 112 miles an hour. Nice. Brake here, trail brake in, turn in, no braking here at this corner, Tr throttle, full throttle, accelerate out. Yet yeah, over here also, heavy braking, I should downshift into third here nice. and take this, um, this double apex corner in third gear. Um, in fact, I should be able to carry third all the way through here hit the apex here as we go down the hill, accelerating, threshold braking here, trail into this corner, hit the apex, throttle, track out, third, third to be, I should be in third gear all through there, and then perhaps shift it into fourth as I get to this complex right here. It's this fast right hander, which is part of the S, the S bend, and then transition over to the second part of the S, hit the apex on the inside there, miss the apex a bit, go out to the cone, heavy braking here, look left, Trail in, hit that apex, tight on almost on the curb. Stick to the middle of the track here. Turn in, hit that apex here. Stay right, stay right, stay right. Turn left, hit the apex and throttle. Throttle, throttle. Here I should be in third while I carry that speed. Only shift into fourth when I get perhaps midway down. I should be able to get up to 130 miles an hour on this, this corner. I get up to 125 in my earlier session. I think 125, 126. And so um, I saw some, some areas where I could oh, significantly nice improve in terms of throttle application, in terms of being in the right gear, in Thank terms of um, <laughs> the threshold braking and the trail braking into the corners. There's a lot of work that I need to do. But this driving here is very, very smooth and consistent. Now, for as far as the timing overlay, I did a mistake in terms of setting it up. Right, so it's, it's set up for performance driving when it should be set up for track driving, and I'm supposed to mark the start and, start and finish line. So here, it's really not giving me any indication of lap times. So I don't have a basis um, of how well I was doing in terms of lap time around ECR, you know, but I know for sure I was driving better than I have ever driven this track right here. I was very comfortable, I was relaxed, I was smooth, with the throttle input, smooth with the steering input, smooth in the braking events. Nice. 
Um, like I said, the gears, I was in the wrong gears for many of the corners. I probably should have been in third gear um, to carry the speed through those corners and then shift to fourth, you know, once I'm, you know, midway down the straight or whatever, um, whenever the car calls for that shift. So, um, you have to be humble Beautiful. as a driver when you're doing these events you right because you don't want to get it, right? ahead of yourself. You know, you're driving a, an expensive car with other people with expensive cars and, and, and your safety is the most important thing. So you have to drive within your own ability and, and as your ability and skills develop, no, then the pace will this come. You, you know, uh, but right there, most good. importantly okay, is that? being able then to hit in. all the marks, being able to hit the braking point, you know, trail break in, uh, track out, smooth deliberate steering input being consistent, the hitting the braking points, at yes. the, hitting the braking, the hitting the brakes at the same spot point every, every single lap, you know, carrying the same amount of speed through the corners. And then as you get better, you will realize that you can carry more speed through the corners. You could revise your braking point. Maybe you could yeah, move yeah, it in yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, closer yeah. because no, you no, figure no, you were no, braking no. too, too, yeah. too early. Sweet. Or maybe you need to move it back. You were braking too late or not braking enough for me. I usually run into problems with not breaking enough. <laughs> you know, not breaking too much, but not breaking enough. <laughs> so, um, okay. you were yeah, that's um, <laughs> you were one of the things that I've been, <laughs> uh, that I will be working on during the next session. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm very, very, very stoked about this. It's, it's a very expensive <laughs> hobby. That's a pretty cool old Viper, isn't it? But yeah. I find it to be <laughs> very, very rewarding. Yeah. You know, they say you only live once. Yeah, so you might as well live on your own terms and do the things that bring joy uh, to your life. And yeah. when I'm at the track, yeah. I'm around people who have similar interests. And so the conversation about cars and things that you like to talk about because you love those kind of things, like you're able to do it Trail? with these, yes. um, what is all of this? Um, yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward to my um, my next track uh, track event. So um, yeah, so on, on this on this particular lap here, right here, I should carry more I could carry more speed through here. Miss the apex a little bit here. Heavy braking down here. Trail into this corner. Hit that apex. Track out. There's a lot of room to track out here. I did a pretty good job on that right here. I should be approaching this turn in about 90, 93 miles an hour. Carry the speed in. There's no braking there. Just lift, carry the speed in. Transition, lift over here. Carry as much of the speed as possible. Head straight for that cone. Brake heavy here, turn in. Tra trail brake into this corner here. Don't go all the way out left. Kind of stay mid-track. Try to hug this as tight as you possibly can. And try to get right at this cone, turn in. Try to hit the apex while you get on the throttle. Full throttle, I should be here. Full throttle. Um, I think this was a cool down lap or taking it easy lap because I felt the brakes was getting a little bit spongy. So I was trying to cool it down a little bit uh, before pushing again. That corner right there we just passed, I, I'm, I'm aiming to break at the three board. Um, usually approaching that corner at uh, maybe 120 something miles an hour, 125, 126. If I get a good run out of the, the, the corner that leads down to that straight, I could get up to 130. And so finding the right braking point for that corner would be very, very important, right? You don't want to um, trigger ABS, but you want to threshold hard enough to get at the very edge of ABS and trail off into that corner that follows. So those are all of the little nuances and things that I'm learning as I drive the car um, and get more and more in tune with it. I mentioned earlier in the session I spun um, at the con constant radius corner, which is turn 14, I believe. And the reason why I spun, like I said, I was trying to give too much throttle too soon. The steering wheel was still turned, and I got on the throttle, got a little bit greedy through there, and of course, um, it, the car spun out on me. Later on, during the different sessions, I was able to feel 
you know, I was more in tune with what the car was doing at various points on the track, actually at every point of the track. So when I came to that very same corner that I spun, I was able to feel the, the, uh, the limits of what the car can do in that corner, in that gear, right? So I felt the traction control kick in or something kick in, which let me know to modulate the throttle a little bit. And so I was able to modulate the throttle, keep the rear end stable and carry the speed through the corner and track out as usual without spinning the car. So if that one spin helped me to become a little bit more in tune with the car, so I'm aware of what it's doing at any given time so I could anticipate any potential um, spins so I could counter it before it happens. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the beautiful things about seat time. You get to be more in tune with your car, right? And, and you're able to feel and anticipate certain things and make the proper inputs so that you can keep the car stable. One of the things I realized that I was doing better um, during this session also was that I was keeping the load in the tires around the corner. And Mark pointed that out to me. He said, you, you're consistent through the corners in terms of steering input, like the constant radius corners. I'm sorry, the double apex corner, like this one here. So this is, needs to be taken as one. And I was able to do that and carry the speed. And you hear just enough tire squeal to indicate that you have enough steering input to keep the load on the tires. This was the corner here that I spun out. And I, I, that's where I was feeling again, you know, what the car was telling me. And, you know, with the tire, the track temperature was very, very, very high. Um, the brakes was, was, was very, very, very hot. I'm running street tires on this car. And so it doesn't grip up as much as, you know, um, the, the car, the tire that came with the car from the factory when I bought it. And I spoke to another fellow who has the same car uh, Camaro CL11LE, same color even. And when we were at uh, Crescent Motorsport Park, uh, the best time I did there was a 129, right? Um, with my coach at the time, it was Aaron Young. I did a 129 there. And I was motivated to try to go quickly because my instructor uh, from the very, very first session at ECR, Lou Alexander, was following me in his car. So obviously I wanted to show him that I learned the... Um, you know, the things that he taught me. So I was hitting the marks, hitting the apexes, carrying the speed through the corner, not overdriving. And as a result of doing those things, I was doing a relatively quick lap. And then anyway, I spoke to the guy about, I was asking him what kind of times he were doing. And at the time, he said he was doing 125s, you know, high 124s, I think 125. And I was like, well, my best time was a 129, which is, you know, four or five seconds off the pace. And he said, all of that is in the tires. He said the tires that I had on my car, he used to have also. And he changed to a, um, a 200 thread wear tire or something like that. And he said he found four seconds just in the tires alone. So anyway, I'm not really concerned a lot now about lap times. I'm more concerned about the proper steering inputs, the proper braking, uh, trail braking, threshold braking, um, hitting my marks. Um, uh, track awareness and those kind of things and I believe the speed will come um, as I, I refine my inputs on the track. One thing I noticed also um, that I was going quicker or at least at the same pace as everybody else in my run group. I think we were in the intermediate um, two uh, because I only had that one uh, point by and nothing else so no one was catching me um, so I, I was either running good enough lap times to be consistent with the faster guys in my run group or I was running faster than everybody in my run group I don't know because I don't know what times they were running I don't even know what times I was running I just know that I was very very consistent on a scale of 1 to 10 I would say my consistency was perhaps about a seven, right? Um, I missed a few apexes here and there, but overall on the day, it was a very, very, very productive day for me in terms of learning, very, very, very efficient day for me in terms of applying what I learned into my driving skills to build it and get better, and a very, very enjoyable day for me.
the fun factor was at a was at a ten. Nice. On a scale of one to ten, the fun factor today for me was at a ten. Um, actually, it was at a twenty. <laughs> And spitting in the first session didn't dampen that. Actually, it helped me to be more focused and to be more precise with my steering input and to be more aware of what the car is doing so that I can um, add the proper, uh, proper input. But anyway, this is uh, <laughs> DIA, Driving Anger, sponsored by The Voice of Source. The Voice of Source is um, a voiceover uh, company that does audiobooks, uh, documentary, and IT training videos. And so that sponsors my um, track day, my track time, the opportunity for me to do something uh, that I love very much. And so uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, I'm looking forward to my next uh, track event. This is a lot of fun. Oh yeah, by the way, um, some housekeeping if you like the content please like share and subscribe a little thumbs up is pretty good the way the algorithm in YouTube work I would like to grow this channel um, I'm not sure if there are a lot of people out there who share this the level of enthusiasm that I have for on track driving HPD high performance driving events but perhaps there are some people out there who are interested and if you are thank you for watching and just please give a thumbs up and subscribe and share with um, others who may uh, have similar interests. If you find one really good, you get a good reference lap here, you save it for a while, and the next time you come when it's cooler and stuff, we get a lap in, you check that one, how it looks. Because right. then you can see if you're keeping your basic techniques, you know, if you're keeping online, if you're braking right, you know? Right. And um, that's what's kind of neat about Track Addict, is you get, you get all these file folders, you can save the stuff really easy. Right. I must say, this is the smoothest I've ever been on track with you and your uh, coaching. And you're going faster than anybody else out there. Yeah, you know, nobody's Even the Corvette it. guy, he got close and he didn't want to go by. <laughs> yeah, nobody's catching. Wow. Mark, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> so, Ooh. so you know, when I write up stuff, I write up about how your demeanor is on track. Yeah. One of the things I noticed is when you wanted the guy to pass, you kind of stayed on the wrong side. Okay. Normally, you would come out of the turn and move over to the right okay. and give him the inside of the next turn. That way, if he passes late, he's on the inside. Okay. So that's the only thing. So if we get anybody that wants to pass us, let's do a little bit of those drills so you get comfortable with that. But you generally stay online and make them go offline to the inside. Okay. Gotcha. That's generally the rule. Gotcha. You think about the back straight, we'd make him pass on the left. Mm -hmm. Same kind of a thing. Okay. Don't run over your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Have a t-shirt made. It said don't run over don't your run shit. Don't run over your shit. <laughs> <laughs> your techniques are good. Um, you don't hang on to the shifter when we're going through the gears. You take your hand off and you go back to it. Your hands are staying in the right place. Your feet are right. You're comfortable and you're calm. You don't get excited. You relax. Even when you're getting late and you get and you think you're not going to make it. You brake, and you trail, and you and you trail in, and you just and you're fine. That's it, this is all about calm attitude and watching mirrors. You saw the guy with the red Corvette coming. When he got close enough, you said, "Okay, you can go." Yeah. And staying on that side, it's kind of a, it's kind of a thing when you're coming out of there to push him on that side. Right. But if he'd have gone up and just gone back over, then pushed him on that side, he'd have been on the inside the next turn. So it's just about think about that when you're doing them. Okay. Um, but everything else is we're doing it just like we're supposed to. We're not hurting the car. When it's hot like this, this is not where you're going to make your record times. This is where you're going to get all your techniques really down. Mm -hmm. And when it starts to get cool in the fall, we're going to haul ass out there. <laughs> yes, sir. Really nice. Thank really you, enjoy. Thank you, sir. So you got uh, another classroom and then one more session, right? Uh, yes, sir. One okay. more. Yes. Cool. Get some water. Yes, sir. We'll do.